Welcome Clarity Coders. In today's video, we're going to use PyTorch to create your first neural network and use that neural net network to classify hand-drawn digits. In the final part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can process your own images to pass through this neural network as well. Best of all, if you get stuck at any point, feel free to jump into our programmer's discord where we can help you walk through any problems you have. Let's jump right in. So the first thing we're going to do is install PyTorch. So I'm going to go to this website. You can just Google PyTorch. It is actually PyTorch.org. Now, if you don't have Python installed already, for this tutorial, I'm going to recommend that you go out and grab the distribution called Anaconda. Anaconda is going to have Python for you and Spider IDE. That's the IDE that I'm going to use in this lecture. I have a video here on how to install it and how to open up Spider as well. Once you have that, you're ready to follow along. So now when you're on this website, you can just click get, get started. And you can see here, they're gonna show you how to start locally on your computer. Now, your GPU is going to be way faster than your CPU to do machine learning calculations. And that's because the GPU has a lot more cores where it can process a lot more small calculations at the same time. Now, I don't know exactly what your system setup is or even if you have a GPU, so we're gonna install it to run on your CPU right now. And in a future video, I'll show you how to move over to the GPU. So right now we're gonna leave all these defaults. Yours should have have your operating system. The package, if you're installing with Anaconda like I am, you're gonna leave this as Conda. If you're not using Anaconda, you can switch to pip and install that way. For your CUDA version down here, we're gonna flip this to none. So this is gonna run on the CPU only. And you can see here, it gives us this nice little command to install everything we need. So I'm just gonna copy that and jump into Spider IDE. So I'm gonna paste that command in here. Now again, you, can, you don't have to do this in Anaconda. You could use pip install and do it in, uh, in terminal like you normally would. This is just if you wanna follow along exactly with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command and we'll let that install. You can see here that we finished installing our packages. It says you may need to restart the kernel to use the updated packages. So just to avoid any issue, let's go ahead and do that. You can go up to consoles, restart kernel, yes. All right, now we have a new kernel to work with. What we're gonna create today is a very basic feed forward neural network. So how that works is we break up a set of inputs, a set of what's called hidden nodes in the middle, and then some output nodes. Now the data set we're going to be using is the MNIST handwritten number data set. We're using this just to set up and it's been done in a lot of different tutorials and a lot of different forms. And we're gonna see how they use the data to come up with these answers. So first things first, we're gonna use this data set as they have laid out already ready for us to input into our network. You can see here that I've done a crude drawing of breaking up an image into four pieces. Now, we're gonna break it up into individual pixels. So every pixel is going to have an input. In this graph, just to keep it simple, I show our, our image being broken into four inputs. In reality, the images we're going to be using are 28 pixels. So we're actually gonna have 784 inputs in our neural network, 28 times 28. Those are all gonna feed through to our hidden layers, which are gonna be set up with random weights. And we may have more than one hidden layer in the middle. Then it's gonna feed through to our output node, which is gonna have 10 different outputs, zero through nine. And whichever has the highest value is going to be our guess. So it's going to be a zero through a nine, guessing what the number actually is. And it's gonna go with the most certain guess. Now, as we train this network with a training piece of our data set, we're going to update the weights of these hidden layers in the middle. And that's going to increase the accuracy of our network over time. Once we're done with that training set, and we're done training our network, then we can evaluate it. So we're gonna stop trying to improve the network and we're gonna pass through a test data set. It's gonna show us how accurate our neural network currently is. Now these test images were not used in the training set. So this will give us an accurate picture of how it's going to do in the wild. First thing we're gonna do is do some imports. So I'm gonna import torch and from torch vision, I'm gonna import data sets. Now I'm gonna pull in the data sets that we're going to use. So as I talked about earlier, this is a little image of the data set that we're going to use. 
And we're just gonna set that in two variables right now. So I'm gonna call one data set train, and that's gonna be our training data set. I'll call it training. And we're gonna pull in using data sets. We're gonna pull in the mnist data set. So this is gonna be the root. The first argument is our root of where we want this directory to be. I'm just gonna put it in our base directory. So I'm just gonna do a blank string. And before we get any farther, let's make sure we're saving this in a folder. So we're gonna put this entire project in a folder. That's where our data set's gonna be and all that. I'm gonna open this up. I have just a temp Python folder here that I'm gonna use. So I'll stay there. I'm gonna save this document inside of that folder. I'll just call it PyTorch example. So we're in our root directory here. I'm gonna set train equal to true, because this is gonna be our training data set. Download equal to true. So we're gonna download it to our local computer here. And we'll set transform equal to transforms.compose. Transforms dot to tensor. So all we're doing here is we're setting this training data set equal to true. We're downloading it onto our local machine here, and we're allowing them to transform them to get our data all ready to put in our network. So we're letting them do the heavy lifting for us, basically in this case. And now I'm going to copy this, and I'll call this my testing data set. I'll set the only difference, I'm going to set test equal to false, grab the test values in this case, and store them in our testing variable. And I also have to import that transforms function as well. So I'm going to import transforms up here, and that'll take care of your errors. I'm going to update my font size here just so we can see a little bit better. So how I'm going to run code is just a little different in this series. I'm going to run it kind of in chunks. So instead of running the whole program with the run file up here, I'm just going to run individual pieces of the code. So I'm going to highlight all this. I got to get my imports in there and I got to get my data set. I'm going to right click and run this cell. So when I run the code like this, this means I'm not gonna have to re-download this data set every time. If you wanna do different imports or stuff like that, you're going to have to right click and import it again, or if you make changes, that sort of thing. So it should go through and grab our data sets. If this goes successfully and you have no errors in your variable explorer, if you flip over here, you should have a testing and a training variable that are MNIST objects. If all that goes okay, then you should be ready to go to the next step. So now that we have these two training and testing data sets set up, I'm gonna now get them ready to go into our network. So we're gonna talk about a couple things here. If we pass the exact same set of data through our network over and over again in the exact same order, our network could learn tendencies. For example, if we have five ones in a row or 10 ones in a row or something like that, where it's just guessing ones at the beginning and then it starts guessing something else, it learns because of the pattern of our data. So when we're using this training set and we're passing it through our network multiple times to train our network over time in things called epochs. So an epoch is going to be how many times we wanna pass the same training set through our neural network to train it. PyTorch is gonna give us some simple functions to allow us to mix that up. So one of those is to shuffle our data. So every epoch, the data is in a different order. And also it's gonna allow us to use batch sizes. So how many items are we passing through the network at one time? And this can affect the speed of your network, how fast you can train it. So I'm gonna call my first one just train set and I'm gonna set that equal to, and I'm gonna do torch.utils.data.dataloader. And then you can see here the functions that are the parameters that we have to pass in. We need to pass in our data set. This is our train underscore set. So I'm gonna pass in our training data from above. I'm gonna pass in our batch size, and I'm gonna set that just equal to one for right now. We can adjust that down the road. I'm gonna set shuffle equal to true, and that's gonna allow our data to be shuffled each time. And I'm gonna do basically the same thing, so I'm gonna copy that, and down below, I'm going to have a test set, and I'm gonna pass in the test data instead, test in data, you can see from my variable above here. And let's change, actually, let's set up our batch sizes to be 10. We'll just see how that looks. 
Now it's time to actually set up our neural network. So to do that, we're going to use a class to define our neural network. And we're gonna have to do one more import from up top. So I'm gonna do import torch.nn as nn. And then I'm gonna create a class for our, our neural network. Now, if you don't fully understand classes in Python, that's okay. You can access this video above where I talk about classes a little more. Basically, we're creating our own object to work with that has its own parameters and attributes and different things like that. So I'm gonna create a class and we can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna call it network. And then we're gonna pass in nn.module. This notation might be a little weird for you, even if you're kind of familiar with classes. What we're doing here is we're creating our own class called network and we're letting it inherit from this parent class, nn.module. So we're gonna be able to inherit attributes and methods and that sort of thing inside of this class that we're setting up. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an init method for when we create our neural network. So we're gonna define that using this special init syntax. So I'm gonna do underscore underscore, make sure you're doing two underscores there, init underscore underscore, again, two underscores. Then we're gonna pass in self. Again, reference my video if you're a little confused by that notation. This is just gonna allow the object to know about its own attributes, methods, that sort of thing. Then we're gonna call the initialize method on our parent. So this nn.module. So I'm gonna do super dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And that's gonna call the initialization method from our parent that we passed in that we're inheriting from. And now we're ready to create our own network. Now, if you remember me talking about our data set a little before, it's going to be an image that's 28 by 28. And what PyTorch has done for us is it's flattened the pixels of that image into a single array or list, if you will. So basically, if there's 28 pixels in a row and there's 28 rows, we're doing 28 times 28, which is 784 total pixels. Now, PyTorch has also done some different things with this image that I'll talk about later, like grayscaling and different things of that nature and normalizing the numbers. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit at the end when we start using our own images. So now we're gonna set up the individual layers of our network. Now our network is going to have an input layer first that I showed in this picture. It's gonna have more than four inputs. It's gonna have 784 actually. So we're gonna define that attribute. We're gonna say self dot, and then we can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna call it input layer, and I'm gonna set that equal to nn.linear784. So that's how many input nodes. And the next is how many output nodes this will have. And remember, this is going to our middle hidden layer. We can really decide any amount of nodes we want on the next level. It's kind of up to us. So let's just start by saying 64. And a lot of this neural networks is kind of learning over time and playing with different parameters. So right now we're kind of getting set up and just seeing what happens. We're gonna have 784 inputs going to a middle layer of 64 nodes. And then we can create our next layer. So the next layer is going to be hidden one, we'll call it. And we'll set that equal to nn.linear. Now the first number is going to be in. And now if we're following the flow of our program here, the input layer is going to pass it to the hidden one layer. So we have to have 64 inputs because that's how many outputs we have right here. Now we could have any number for our output again, but we're gonna have one more hidden layer. So we'll go ahead and put 64 again. We'll have self.hidden2. We'll set that equal to nn.linear. We have to receive 64. And this is going to pass to our output node. So we'll say 64 again. We'll do self.output. And we'll set that equal to nn.linear. We'll receive 64. We said we have 10 possible outputs. So the output could be a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9. So a total of 10 different outputs. So you can see here from how we ordered this, this is actually the flow of our network. So input, we're gonna put 784 different pixels. We're gonna pass it to 64 in the hidden layer. That's gonna pass it to 64 in hidden layer two. That's gonna pass it to 64 nodes in our output layer. And it's gonna give us a final guess of one of our 10 different numbers. Linear is the type of function our nodes are gonna use to determine their output. We can get really deep in the mathematics of it, 
But right now we're just gonna stick with using that to determine our output from the node. So the next thing we have to do is define how data will flow through our network. Now our network is just a feed forward neural network. So we're just gonna define one function here and it's gonna be forward. Well, pass in self again, and then data. This is, data is just a variable that I chose. You can choose whatever you want. And then we're gonna say how data is gonna flow through this network. And we're gonna do one more import up here, actually. We're gonna import torch.nn functional as capital F. So this is gonna allow us to call this parent as a function instead of the module that we have up here. And now we're gonna keep pushing this data through the network. So the first thing we're gonna do is set data equal to, we're gonna call that F the functional one that we have above, and we're gonna call rel u. Rel u stands for rectified linear unit, and it's essentially going to figure out what nodes are firing and what nodes aren't firing in our data set as we pass data through it. So now we're gonna pass our data through the first layer. So we're gonna do self dot input layer. We're gonna pass in our data. So now once this ReLU runs, it's gonna reassign the values in our data variable, and then we can call that again. So here I'm gonna reassign this variable again, and I'm gonna do the same thing as above. I'm gonna do ReLU again, except now I'm gonna pass it through the second layer of our network. So that's gonna be hidden one, and I'm gonna pass in our data again. And then you can guess, I'm gonna do the same thing a couple more times. I'm gonna do hidden two this time. And then finally, I'm gonna set our data equal to self.output. This is our final node, data. So essentially, even though we have them in order up here, we didn't really pass any data through. We were just setting up our network. Now down here, we actually push data through our network and we went in order just like we did above. We don't have to, that's just how we did it. And this should define our neural network. We need to return the actual output from our network. So we're gonna return f.logsoftmax. We're gonna use our data. And we have to say dim equals one. That's the dimension of our output data. Remember, our, our output data is just a single set of choices, zero through nine. So that's the axis that we're working on, similarly to pandas. And you'll notice we're using a soft max here. Basically what that's going to do is give us a probability of each choice that sums up to 100% or one. So essentially if we have two choices, like say you're doing dog or a cat, it might say the picture is 0.6 for cat and 0.4 for dog. And then we would pick the cat because it has the higher percentage of being correct. And we're going to do that with our 10 different number numeric choices. So now if you remember, we haven't ran any of this code yet into our program. You can see our class isn't defined. We haven't done these two imports. So I'm going to highlight this right click and run cell. Now I could run the entire program, but then it's gonna re-download our data and take a little while. So I'm just gonna run these cells. If you have problems, you can go ahead and run it from uh, this green arrow up here and rerun the whole program and that should fix any issues. And then I can come down in our program and we should be able to actually create our network now using that class. So I'm gonna set my network equal to our class network. Now remember in our init function, we don't pass anything into it. Self is given, so we're not gonna pass any parameters inside of this, and this should create our neural network. Now if I run just this cell, we'll see if there's any errors, and it looks like we're good to go. So now we have to set some learning parameters. So as we go through our network, and our network learns from its own mistakes, how much should it adjust the weights to try and make a better prediction? Now more is not always better, and being teeny tiny is not better either. So what we wanna do is kinda of play around with a learning rate that can allow our network to learn as much as possible from our data set without overcorrecting and going back and forth like crazy. So I'm gonna call this learn rate and I'm gonna set it equal to, and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna do another import at, up top here. And I'm gonna import torch.optim as optim. Now I can run this cell. Oh, I left my learning rate blank down here. Comment that out for right now. I'm gonna run this import, run cell. That was successful. Now we can go back down here and use that. 
So let's set up our learning rate. So I'm gonna do optim.atom. And now the first argument here is going to be our network's parameters. So you're gonna use the variable that you have your network stored in. So ours was stored in network. And I'm gonna do dot parameters. Now remember, we didn't set up this method. This is an inherited method from the parent. So we inherited this method from this NN module. So it's gonna tell our parameters, and then we just have to say what we want our learning rate to be. So we can set LR equal to, and you can pick any number here, you can play around with this. I'm going to pick a 0 0.01 for our learning rate for right now. Again, this is another parameter that you can play with inside of your network to try and come up with the best solution. And finally, we need to say how many epochs we want in our network. So this is how many times we wanna pass the training set through our network while we're training and let those network weights adjust. Again, more is not always better. We can overtrain our network. So we're gonna pick a number here and I'm just gonna set it equal to five times. And now we're actually ready to train our neural network. So first we want to create a for loop that's the amount of times that we're gonna train our neural network. So I'm just gonna say for i in range epochs. So this is just gonna execute however many times is in our epochs variable. And now inside of this, I wanna iterate over our training data set. So our train underscore set. So I'm gonna say for data in our train set, I'm just gonna print out our data. Now I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna run it. And you can see this is gonna print out a lot of stuff, especially cause I iterated it over it five times. And you can see the printout is a little strange. We have our actual data and then we have a tensor object along with that. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this, push that red stop button over there. So let's actually break this data out into two pieces. So instead of data, I'm gonna have our image and output. So I'm gonna break up this data variable into two variables called image and output. And here I'm gonna print out image, and then I'm gonna print out output. I'm only gonna go over this one time while I'm showing you this. And then I'm gonna break out of this for loop as soon as I hit the first one. I'm gonna run this again. And you can see this output here, and it's a little confusing at first, but I'm printing out to, let me make it a little more, let me make it a little simpler to see. Let me print just a dash here, print a dash. I'm gonna run this cell one more time. There, that cleaned it up just a little bit. So you can see here are different items. So you'll notice after our first dash, we're printing out what we call quote unquote image. So what this image is, it is all of the parameters in our image in a flattened tensor object. So this is the actual image data here. And they all look like zero because it's all been normalized between zero and one. So they're all some amount of decimal number, which this output isn't very helpful there, but there is actually data in here. And you'll notice there are 10, well actually it hides some of them here there are 10 images that it's passing through and that's because we set our batch size equal to 10. Now in the second one that I named output, the second variable that I named output, you can see that there are 10 output results. Again, this is because our batch size is 10 and that's the actual answer of what the image really is. So the first image was a one, the second image was a one, the third image was a five and so on and so forth. Now, if we run this again, you can see that the image has changed. Now it's an image, the first one's a four, the second one is a zero, and why is that? That's because our data is being shuffled. So I can highlight this one more time by doing one more import up top. I keep saying one more, there might be more imports. I'm gonna import matplotlib as plt. You should have this if you have Anaconda, you can do an install if you don't. So I'm gonna run this cell, and now along with printing out the image variable, remember this image, is a list of 10 different sets of image data. So it's not just one image. So I'm gonna do plt.imshow. Now I'm gonna pass in my image variable, but this is all a list of 10 different images, and I just wanna show the first one. So the first index is going to be zero. So if I run this again, you'll see this is an invalid image shape. So I'm gonna do .view 
And this is gonna allow me to convert the image and I'm gonna say I want it to be 28 by 28. So try this again, run this cell. And you can see you should have another little output down here. You can see our first image looks like a three to me. You can see that it's a three in the output node, the answer, so that was meant to be a three. All right, perfect. So we've shown what we're looking at here. So we're looking at the output, the individual images. Let's just comment these out for right now. We don't want the break anymore either. So now we have our actual image data and the actual output. Let's go ahead and do something with that. Let's train our network. So each time we go through here, we're gonna reset our network's gradient. So we're gonna reset any of the loss that we had before. So we're gonna do dot zero underscore grad. So this is so each pass through our network is unique, or each image is unique. So now let's actually run our data through our network. So I'm gonna say my result equals, let's call our network and let's pass in our image. Remember image and output here. So our image, we actually want to change the view. We're going to say negative one and then whatever our total amount of pixels was. So remember we're flattening this down. So it's 28 by 28. We're going to flatten it to 784 pixels. This should give us our results. Now our loss is going to be how far off our guess, our network's guess of the number was from the actual result. So say for example, our network predicted that the number one prediction, for the number one, it gave a prediction of 0.4, so the loss would be 0.6. And then we're gonna use that to correct our network. So we're gonna say f dot nll underscore loss is equal to our result. And now we're gonna pass in what the answers actually should have been. So remember, that was stored in our output variable. So this is gonna give us our loss amount. And now we're going to update the weights in our network by backward propagating our results. So we're gonna say loss.backward. And then we're gonna step through our learn rate. So we're gonna do learn rate dot step, and that should be it. Then after each epoch, we can print out our loss. And now we're ready to run this. Now this is going to take a while. I'm gonna do two epochs if you're on a CPU. So hang tight, highlight all this, right click, run cell, and we'll wait for it to finish running. Now this took a few minutes on my computer. You can see here that the loss the first epoch was 41, the loss the next epoch was eight. So it's definitely getting down there. I'm gonna run this one more time. This time I'm gonna do four epochs and then we'll move on. Awesome, now that that's finished, you can see our learning rate over here and this may raise an alarm for you. You can see we started out at 0 0.03, then we actually went up. Our network got worse, then came back down a little and finally flowed to the lowest point it hit yet. So this is kind of what the training looks like and you can see how if we overcorrect, sometimes we actually get worse on a later epoch. Now, hopefully we're working our way down towards the bottom to a lower loss percentage. But again, this is just our training data set. So even if we got that number to 0 0.00001, that network might do worse against a test data set that's totally different data than a training network that had a, point, a loss of 0 0.03. Maybe we've overtrained our network. So whatever your number here is, as long as you're getting lower to the 0 0.03, somewhere in that range, you should be good to go. So now we should have our network trained and we can move on to testing our network to see how it performs against our test data. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these print statements. We don't need them anymore. And I'm gonna do a couple things. Now we're gonna put our network in eval mode and that's gonna tell PyTorch that, hey, we're not teaching our network anything else. It's not gonna be learning. We're just gonna evaluate how it's doing with our test data set. So I'm gonna do network.eval. And while we go through our test data, I'm actually gonna add a with statement here. I'm gonna say with torch.no underscore grad. Now this is, going to keep us from using any sort of back propagation, but we're not going to do that anyways because we're not training our network anymore, we're testing it. So this is gonna speed up our computations with no real cost to our program because we're not doing any type of learning or back propagation. So now I wanna do something similar to what I did with our training data set. 
Now I'm not gonna use multiple epochs because I'm just gonna pass our test data through once because we're not training, but I'm gonna use a for loop just like I did before to go over that data. So I'm gonna say for data in test set this time. So you'll notice here I'm going over a different data set. This was the test data set. That's the data that we reserved and didn't use to train on. So we have an accurate picture of how well our network has learned. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna break up that data variable into image and output. And I'm gonna set that equal to data. So I'm unpacking this tuple into a image and an output, just like we did with the training data set. I'm gonna get our result just like we did before. I'm gonna pass in, I just copied this line from above. I'm taking the image, I'm flattening it, I'm passing it into our network and I'm getting the result. Now remember, this is going to be a batch of results. So we wanna keep track of how many we're getting correct, but each result is gonna have multiple, well 10 in this case, batches, 10 individual images coming back. So we need to test all those to see if they were correct. So we can do correct here, we'll set it equal to zero, and our total is equal to zero. This is gonna be our total. So these are just two variables that I'm gonna to use to hold our, the number of images we guessed correct and the total overall images. So after I get my result, I'm going to have 10 results back of sorts, 10, a list of 10. So now we're gonna write a for loop to go over that result. And I'm gonna enumerate over that result so I can keep track of the index that I'm currently on and the value of the result itself. So I'm gonna say for index comma, and the next is gonna be my value, which is actually a tensor object in result. So now once I'm inside this for loop, I know I wanna increase my total amount of images no matter what. So I'm gonna say my total, plus equals one, so I'm gonna add one onto my total no matter what, and then I need to see if my guess is correct or not. So I'm gonna do a little if statement to see if my guess is correct. So I'm gonna say if, and I'm gonna to do torch.argmax. So it's gonna find the maximum value in my tensor object, and that's going to be my guess. So the tensor object's gonna have 10 different values, out of those 10 values, which is the most likely number according to our neural network? So I'm gonna pass in our tensor value that we set up above, and I'm gonna say if that equals our image at this index. So up here we have an enumerated result, so that's gonna tell us what our current index is in that result. So it should be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, because there's 10 batches. So it's gonna ask which one we're on, and then it's gonna say, what is that actual value there? And I don't wanna look at the actual image data, I actually wanna look at the output. I wanna know what the actual image was. So what I'm doing here again, just one more time, is I'm getting our best guess at what the actual number is, and then I'm seeing if that equals what the actual answer is. Here I'm just looking and asking for the actual answer. If those are equal, then I can increase my correct by one. So no matter what, I'm increasing my total by one. If they match, I'm correct. I'm increasing my correct number by one. And then after this is all over, I can print out my accuracy. So my accuracy can just equal my number correct divided by the total. And then I can just print that out to the screen. I'll just use an F string. I can say accuracy space, oops. And then I can use curly brackets and use my variable that I created above to print that out to the screen. That should work. So I'm gonna highlight this and I've been using the wrong, I've been rerunning the entire program even though I said I wasn't. So what I wanna do is I wanna right click if you're in spider, pop-ups for spider are a little annoying. And I'm gonna run selection or current line. So this is only gonna run this little chunk of code. Now, if you restart the kernel or something like that, you're gonna have to rerun everything again, but I have already trained the network. I don't wanna sit and watch that again. So I'm just gonna run selection or current line. And you can see here, I forgot to put enumerate. I said I was gonna enumerate over the result and I didn't. So, and remember, enumerate's just gonna give us back that index value. So I'm going to actually enumerate over our result. So that will give us an index value here along with the actual tensor value itself. 
I'm gonna highlight that same chunk of code, right click, run selection or current line. And now you can see it spits out that our accuracy was 94%. Now that looks pretty good. And that's about what I would expect. And there are a lot of things in this network that you could play around with. Again, we picked 64 nodes, two hidden layers that could all be changed. We could have more hidden layers. We could have less nodes in our hidden layer or more nodes. Our learning rate is at 0 0.01. That could be 0 0.001. It could be anything we wanted. You could play around with that as well to try and get that accuracy higher. Again, this accuracy is way more important with your test data set than it was with your training loss because that training loss, we can overtrain and perfect our network to guess our training set. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be good with totally new data here. So again, 94 is about what I'd expect. As long as you're somewhere above 90, you probably did everything right. If you have something like 100% accuracy or something, you probably messed up somewhere and accidentally used your test data in your training. And now your network's way too good for its actual, or way too, way more accurate than it actually should be. So this is it. We pretty much trained our network with this training data set. I wanted to talk about one more thing, and that's the kind of start to show you how PyTorch got this data ready for us to go through our network. I'll add some more comments on this before I put it on GitHub so you guys can kind of understand, but here's where we're going into testing our network. Here we're gonna take a look at image processing. So I wanna take a look at exactly what PyTorch is doing for us to get these images up and ready to go. So we know we're working with 28 by 28 images. So if we just pull up paint and we create a 28 by 28 image, you can see here that we have kind of an issue right out of the gate. Like we're already processing, processing this teeny tiny image that isn't very accurate of what we would draw an image in. So I'm gonna go ahead and triple that size and we'll do 84 by 84, it's a little better there. And I'll try to draw an image here, my own image, <laughs> I got a three. So now I'm gonna save that image into our directory, wherever that was. And I just called it first test. So I got my own unique image that wasn't in my training set, wasn't in my test set. And I'm gonna open back up my code if you go to File Explorer, you should see your image in here, that first test image, so that's gonna be a three. And I'm gonna import three libraries that are gonna help us, and I'll talk about what I'm using them for as we use those libraries. The first is I'm gonna to use to pull in an image, and a third, and the middle one is NumPy, which is gonna allow me to do some calculations with my image. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just open my image. So I'm gonna say image equals image dot open, and now I put the image in the same directory as my Python script itself. So I don't have to use a path or anything like that. I can just do first test.png. And now let's see if we can open up our image and show it. So I'm gonna do plt.mshow and then our variable that we just created image. I'm gonna highlight these, run my current selection, and you can see that opens up my image. Now I'm gonna show an image from that was already processed with a library on the side here, and you can see that they're very different. So they've done a lot of image processing to get this ready to go through our program. So we're gonna have to try and mimic that to make this work accurately. If I put this through our network right now, it definitely wouldn't work right. Well, we might even be able to try it here. I'm gonna get the result of our network by passing in this new image that we just set up there after I flatten it, and I'm gonna see what the output is. I'm gonna run this selection. You can see we actually can't use our image file. We have to convert this to a NumPy array. So I'm just gonna convert it to a NumPy array. Then PyTorch has a from NumPy line. So I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna pass in our variable that we have above that's now a NumPy array. I'm gonna pass that and create a Tensor torch from that, and I'll save it in a variable called image, and then I can pass that into our function instead. Let's try and run this again. It says it wants our image as a float, so we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. You can already see how much stuff PyTorch did for us before this. So we're just gonna convert it to a float type instead of byte. Highlight again, run the current selection, and you see 
our network thinks it's an eight. But again, we still have a lot of stuff that isn't done with this, not only visually that you can see, but also some behind the, behind the scenes things that you didn't notice. So each of these pixels right now has a value between one and 255. Now, something that we do in almost every neural network is normalize our data to fall between a value of zero and one. You can dig way deeper into this, but when it comes down to it, it basically gets us a value that it's kind of an equal value with everything else in our neural network, and it responds to the zero off, one on kind of computing that we're used to. So each of these pixels that we're passing in right now is a value between zero and 255. We wanna normalize that so it's always a value between zero and one. So what we're gonna do is before we can create our tensor object here, we're actually gonna normalize this image. So I'm gonna take the image and I'm gonna divide everything in it by 255. So that's going to normalize all of our data between zero and one. Now I wanna do some other stuff to the visual side of the image as well. So I did all this just by researching and kind of looking at the difference between what our image looks like right now and what the image looks like that PyTorch is passing in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is convert the image to grayscale. So I'm gonna do image.convert, capital L. This I'm looking up from the pill library here to see how to convert it to grayscale. And then I also wanna resize our image. Remember our image was 84 by 84 just so I could draw it. And all the other images we've trained our network on are 28 by 28. And this method actually you pass in a tuple. Again, I'm getting this just from the documentation. So we should have converted our image. Now we're resizing it to 28 by 28. Let's run this and see if our image looks any different. Now you can see we're way closer, right? This looks a lot more like the image that we're getting from our library, but you can see the colors are kind of inverted. And I don't know exactly why PyTorch did this. I'm sure there's a reason, but we're gonna follow that as well. We're gonna invert the colors so we match what they were passing in. So I'm gonna say image equals image. Actually, I'm gonna run something off the library here. So I'm gonna say pil.imageops.invert and now I'm gonna pass in the image that I wanna invert. And now if I run this selection again, you can see now we're very close to the look that the other image had that we passed in. Now let's run everything again. And you can see it's still guessing eight, which is a pretty good guess. It's getting it wrong. And you'll see I did a bunch of tests here because this wasn't working quite right. The only thing that I was doing wrong is we were converting the image after we need to resize the image first. So that was the very first thing I did and that seemed to fix everything. Now if we go back and do our first test and run this, you can see our network guesses correctly with a three. I got a few other images in here that I was testing on. Some of them won't work, others will, depending on how your network's learned. But this kind of shows you the process that PyTorch went through to set up these images to get it ready to pass through our network. They did all this work for us with the original data set. Just a peek on what we're gonna do moving forward to train on more real world data sets. And that's what we're gonna do in our future lessons. Hang tight with us here. We are moving on in PyTorch and trying to use some real data sets next to get a better picture of how we can train our network using a real world example. Until next time, keep coding.